On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have the opening results of the 2023 striped bass season. And it certainly was a good one. I got on the fish myself and I will share the results, all of our upcoming events and our correspondence check-in from around the island, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, April 20th, 2023, and the bass season opened with a bang. But before we get to our reports and our correspondence, I want to let you know that the digital edition is out now in New Jersey. Delaware Managing Editor has an article on Century, the company that manufactures exceptionally high-quality rods. In fact, we also have a video on YouTube and a podcast available on iTunes and Google Podcasts with a round table of knowledgeable captains and guides that talk about the advantage of these great rods for fishing in the Northeast. Check it out. When you are a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, you are automatically entered into the Dreamboat Contest and your chance to win a center console from Steigercraft powered by Yamaha, 30 bucks for 12 glossy print issues and all the digital issues sent to your inbox. Best deal going on in the water. On May 13th, the Freeport Tuna Club will hold their fishing flea market. A mission is free. Then Great Fish Tag Research is holding their first ever 100% tag and release tournament Thursday, May 18th out of Highlands, New Jersey. Call 844-824-8353 or email Roxanne at greatfishtag.org for all the details. To get all the details on these events, visit thefisherman.com slash events as well. The Fisherman Magazine has launched their apparel store, hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, all online now. And free shipping with orders over 100 bucks. Also, this broadcast is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcast. So search for the Fisherman Magazine's podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and our other content. Now let's head over to the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. We're going to start off with my personal report from my local striper trip last week. Right in the Great South Bay, anywhere from Patchogue to Oakdale, there's been a good body of bunker that moved in recently. And right on them with schoolie stripers with a surprising number in the slot. My first day out on the action saw some follows from them on plugs, but they were really keyed in on the live bunker. So snagging and redeploying them on circle hooks was the go-to. Keep in mind, you do have to use circle hooks when targeting stripers with natural bait. By the end of the trip, uh, me and a buddy of mine caught and released six stripers all in the slot. We went out again the next day and found the fish right away, but they seemed to be a little smaller, so using smaller bunker was the key. Once again, we had good success with the live baits. Anglers at Magnolia Pier in Long Beach noted that the bass are chasing herring and shad. Anglers also reported that a good bass bite along the North Shore from Little Neck to Northport Harbor took place again this week. Bloodworms are additionally nailing bass in the Hudson River for those up that way. And even the Whitestone and Throg's Neck are seeing some good action too on the worms. An encouraging flounder report for all those flatty fans. Lloyd of the Nancy and Pete cashed in on some springtime flounder from Jamaica Bay last week using sandworms and fresh chum. For all those going out of Staten Island and the city, the bite in Raritan kept up last week again with stripers of all sizes being caught on both live bunker and a mix of artificials including mojos, bucktails, saw plastics, and topwater lures. Along the south shore in the ocean, the wrecks once again produced this week with a good mix of cod and tog. Tog seem to be moving closer to the shore with the water temperatures spiking up. Shinnecock, Mauritius, Far Island, and the AB Reef were all worthy places to try. Surrounding wrecks in the same depths of water will also produce. 
from Taylor Renee Charters, I did get a confirmed report of a striper over 40 pounds caught west of Debs Inlet on the troll last week. Inside near the Wantaw, Meadowbrook, and Fire Island bridges, stripers were starting to take hold with some schoolies caught on, and some slotfish on soft plastics along the pilings. Docks in Lindenhurst, Babylon, and Massapequa areas saw some stripers caught as well on bunker chunks and sandworms. And over in Mastic, Rich from Dick's Bait and Tackle gave me a brief update saying that there were a few tog near the Mauritius Jetty and Smith Point Bridge. He did mention a couple of flounder were caught in the bay, but the bite was super slow for them still. Centrally on the island's north shore, a decent tog bite did develop out of Port Jeff and Mount Sinai Harbors in 15 to 20 feet of water on the rock piles. And for those who enjoy the fresh water, the Belmont Lake State Park Fishing Festival did take place on Saturday, and while the weather was a bit overcast, the fishing was good. I personally saw several anglers hooking up into rainbow trout from 2 to 3 pounds on worms fished under the floats. Plenty of fish were caught, and it was all smiles for all that attended. News 12, meteorologist Rich Von Owen has been on the cod and bass bite off Atlantic Beach. Let's see what the weekend has in store. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite weather apps, uh, weather tools, local sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So our water temps slowly coming up, 40s, 50s now across the ocean and the sound. The weekend uh, is not going to be terrific, certainly not perfect. You know, general two to four is a bit of a roll, four to eight coming in from the east. A lot of east-southeast winds coming in there, especially going into Saturday night, going into early Sunday morning. And then it may sit down a little bit Sunday, midday, afternoon as the front goes by. We'll see how things kind of shape up there. A little east-southeast breeze. Saturday morning window between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m. may be okay. And then we start to get more of a southeast, uh, you know, 15 to 20, certainly towards the afternoon and evening with the front coming in. There'll be some rain Saturday afternoon, evening at night, going into early Sunday. A little window there, maybe Sunday morning when the wind isn't too bad. And then we start to get more of a west-southwest midday afternoon as the front goes by. Saturday high tides, north shore early afternoon, south shore figure about 9, 10 a.m. 50s, 60s to near 70 on Saturday, you know, a little cooler perhaps on Sunday. Check out the Guru, a little different look there Saturday. And, you know, I see a lot of east, but it maybe sits down a little bit between 7 a.m. and noon. A little window in there. Really kicks up Saturday night. Watch out for that. Little window early Sunday before it starts to go westerly. So it's back and forth this weekend. The waves probably coming up a little more into Sunday morning. So uh, just be safe. Pick your spots. Catch them up. Have a great weekend. Matt, back to you. Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, really good start to the striper season. Um, you know, pretty much from Raritan all the way to Southampton and my neck of the woods in between Shinnecock and Mauritius. Um, the bay does seem to be producing more fish. Uh, got a couple of random reports of, uh, you know, uh, mid slot size uh, at night and um, nothing really happening out on the ocean. A friend of mine was down at Shinnecock Inlet this morning and um sort of about 50 or 60 gannets diving on what i'm pretty sure has to be bunker um you know probably hopefully some fish underneath you know there have been uh, some fish over the weekend robert moses so hopefully they're moseying their way over to uh to my neck of the woods here and um but you know it's still strong that raritan bite uh is still going on um anthony vaccaro with a real nice one they they got fish on everything he and uh and steve fergari on flutter spoons bunker uh, trolling spoons, the whole nine yards. So hopefully we'll see some of that um, phenomenal fishing making it our way. And in the meantime, you know, a fish here and there after a long off season is well welcomed and exciting to be back on the hunt and and uh, bumping into a lot of people. So um, anyway, get out there and fish. Let us know how you do. Comment below and I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have the Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. Wow, there's so much excitement in the air. Can you feel it? I can feel it. It's uh, never seen so many positive vibes before. We're going into this incredible season. The bass is amazing. It's almost like I'm fishing in, uh, you know, May. Three, four weeks ahead of time. The mild winter really has triggered these fish. And uh, what I say is you really want to find the bait. You want to stick to those areas where it doesn't seem like placid, nothing's going on. You really want to find the bait and then work around the bait, work through the bait, use bait, but you must find bait. And the larger fish are really sticking to these four or five inch 
uh, peanut bunker. There's a lot of peanut bunker. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of adult bunker yet, but the fish are definitely uh, chasing bunker. They want that fatness, you know. The spearing was early uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, there was tons of it, but spearing tends to be very lean, and these bass are like so thick and slimy and healthy. I don't see parasites on them. They're fantastic to handle. You know, watch out for the slime layer. Treat them very carefully, but uh, the fishing's dynamic. We're gonna wait for some porgies should be coming in soon, right? Um, well, I haven't seen a whole lot of porgies yet, but the porgies are gonna be filtering in. It's that time of the year, and being that it's uh, so warm, we've got 54 inside the harbor, uh, rather uh, Huntington Bay, and Huntington Bay has Huntington Centerport, Duck, and Northport uh, harbors that all attach to it, Lloyd's Harbor as well. So there's a lot going on. There's big pods of fish. They're healthy, they're hungry, and they're super aggressive. You want to get out there and target some areas where you might be shallow. Look to the highs where the fish push the bait in and the larger fish have enough room to get in there. And then they like clobber them for a short period of time and then move out. If you're uh, fishing the low into the incoming, that's been really positive in particular spots as well. Um, and you're looking for deeper areas, again, where these fish feel comfortable and they have their bait corralled. Uh, get out there, really enjoy yourself. Practice that common courtesy, it's so important, right? And uh, until next week, I bid you all peace and tight lines. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Zetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island Report. Uh, bass action is red hot right now. Uh, mo mostly in the Big Bay. Uh, fish are up on the north side, mid bay to the north side, anywhere from Babylon to Sayville and uh, taking surface plugs, uh, bass assassins, bucktails, you name it. A lot of short fish, but a lot of fish in the slot size as well. So uh, fishing is excellent. Also in the ocean, uh, a lot of codfish on the wrecks and uh, a, lot of, a lot of striped bass on the beach as well from surf casters. So everything is looking great. Uh, it's shaping up to be a ban of spring. Uh, waiting for those big monster bluefish to show up in the back bay area that should happen in a week or so and right now striped bass fishing is hot so fire island report excellent right now matt from oceanside we have captain joey Leggio. hey matt what's going on the report out of the deb zealand area is codfish blackfish striped bass everything's happening as it should be the codfish bite's been really good i've been having lots of luck with the guys going down to um uh, rockaway reef we've been doing the best there also, obviously, everybody knows the Raritan bite's good, but also the bass in our back bays now is also starting up pretty good. So it's definitely turned out to be a really good spring. I'm over here at Bay Park Fishing Station. I'm going to go walk in, see the new owners over here. Wish them well. All right, guys, we're here at Bay Park Fishing Station. We've got our new owners, and we got some of the originals back. Look who's back. How you doing, fellas? Getting stocked up for the season. Hope we keep everybody's lines tight. Come down and see us for some bait and tackle. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Chris. Hey, thanks, Matt. What's going on, guys? So I'm going to be covering the last two weeks here, and we're going to get the non-local stuff out of the way first. Starting off down in Fort Pierce, Florida, I was with my friend Tom for first light tackle, throwing these guys in pursuit of slot and large snook. Uh, these are first light tackle snook jigs. You may also know them as flare hawks. Wonderful lure, and we had snook up to 38 inches on them. Beat them up good. I'm not going to dwell there because it's not local, so let's keep moving. As far as our freshwater scene goes, the carp seem to be, that's what I've been paying attention to the last few weeks, the carp seem to be more energetic, they got a lot of that spring life to them, they're hitting more uh, aggressively on top, there's a lot more tail wax, there's just less coaxing than I would have had to do a couple months ago, so that's very good to see. As far as the freshwater side of things, um, if you've noticed, there's been striped bass being caught left, right, and sideways. Uh, the backwater seemed to be doing very well, and from what I understand, there was a couple caught in the beachfront. So we got a very good April. Um, I've only been out a couple times. I plan to be out more, throwing the usual Kytex, SP minnows, and if you're going to be fishing around those bunker, those larger, uh, larger plug profiles, there's fish to be caught. I hope to see you all out there, and take care. Back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. Well, the fishing remains outstanding, even though the weather hasn't. This weekend was super rough conditions, almost zero visibility, very thick fog, super dangerous. You have to be really careful out there. And this week is uh, another tough week of high winds, um, but if you can get out there, there are big bass to be caught, 40 to 50 inch bass. 
I found that they seem to be more spread out lately. Uh, we were seeing like 20 foot tall wolf packs and now they're in smaller packs spread out. The bunker is coming in. We're finally seeing big schools of bunker. On a lot of these schools there are no bass on them so you have to search around for bunker schools with bass. Uh, when you find bunker schools with bass it's such a delight because finally we can get some top water action. We say that every fish on top water counts as five fish under and every fish trolling counts as minus two all right um adrian bass appeal rockfish along with brooklyn fishing club had sway from sway in the morning out on on their boat and they slayed a bunch of fish that's my man sway from back in the day um so uh we've got some legendary things going on in, in the area um hit up rockfish for your charter um i'll be out there more i'm seeing uh a lot of birds off of Rockaway Beach so I think we don't have to make that Raritan run much longer. I'm hearing reports of fish in the bay so uh, no more spending all that gas money running to Raritan. They'll be right in Rockaway and Jamaica Bay. Alright so uh, stay safe out there. Tough conditions. Alright stay tight. Peace. Thank you and back to you Matt. With our fly and freshwater report we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello Matt. <laughs> wow. I was hoping to get out of here and do a little fishing today, but it is windy down in one of my local parks, not in the base. But, you know, it is early in the season, and I'm rushing it a little bit, I guess. Uh, I have been fishing. I've been guiding a lot. I actually took uh, uh, Paul out fishing salt water. He wanted to really, he's never done it before. He wanted to really play around with it with saltwater rods. And also he wanted to see different locations. And it was a great day. We didn't see any fish and we didn't hear of any fish caught. It's still a little bit early. The tide was a little off, but we had a great day. He enjoyed it. His casting got really better. On uh, Tuesday, I also guided, I guided a, a couple uh, a young, a couple of young guys, well, young guys my age, <laughs> who also are, re one's retired, one is going to retire, and they want to know all about fly fishing, and they never done it. So we actually went to the Cadet Quad. Now, here's the thing, right? First of all, the rainbows are in spawn, so they're on the beds. Uh, be careful where you walk, even though we don't get a lot of uh, natural reproduction there. It is still, they're there. Leave them alone. But then there's other spots you can fish that don't have reds. And you know what? It still it was it was tough fishing. Several reasons. First of all, it was nice and warm on Monday and cold on Tuesday. And as soon as that happened, they just got locked jaw. You know, we did have land a few. We had a few come up and hit the flies. We also landed a few. Each one I caught two or three each. Uh, mostly on streamers. Um, couple hits on dries. It was really slow. You had to work for it. Changing flies was the trick, of course. Uh, other than that, the best thing is coming up. Mark this on your calendar. April 29th here at Bay Park in East Rockaway. We are doing Rod Douglas Rod Day. Douglas Rod Company is going to be down here demonstrating it. You can play around with all their rods. You can watch Mark Sadani. He's going to be doing casting uh, demonstrations. And I'm going to be cooking up dirty water dogs for everybody. And it's a free day event. Just come down here. It'll be from uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Uh, come down. Enjoy it. Hopefully the weather's going to be nice. Hopefully the stripers, you can also fish here. Uh, hopefully the stripers will be in. Let's try it. Give it a shot. So, on next to next week. Tie lines, everybody. Let's check in with David Rogers. Dave. Thanks, Matt. I'm back in New York after playing with some tarpon in Florida, and what a great time to be back. The striper season has started, and luckily the bite is hot in the Western Sound, with a mix of schoolies and slot fish being caught. Some of the bigger fish are being caught in the sound just outside the bays, either trolling a mojo shad or casting a big metal lip lure. In the bays, the bass have been responding to small profile soft plastics, as well as smaller SP minnows and darters. There are thick schools of spearing and peanut bunker in the bays, so make sure to size down your lures to match the hatch. Blackfish are still in season and are biting in the shallows. If you can find good structure, you can start to build that bite. The Western Sound is full of fish to be caught. Just need to get out there and put in the time. Stay groovy, everyone. 
And back to you, Matt. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Hi, Tim. Hi, Matt. What's going on, guys? Well, guys, Mike Sentry here from Anglers of Legend Sport Fishing, Boat Works, and Seafood. What we got going on, striped bass is red hot in the Raritan Bay. Today I'm here at the local tackle box in Hazlitt. Got Phil back there putting some line on the reels I just purchased. Great products, great service. Can't complain about this shop. It's mom and pop's own for many decades. So this is one of the places to definitely come by and shop by and uh, take care of your local tackle box. Uh, guys are catching them right now with uh, Lifeline Bunker on the evenings. Uh, mornings have been pretty much a jigging and trolling bite with the um, with the popping action and the jigging bite. Some of the lures that are definitely making it happen is the small poppers like this from Tsunami. These are definitely making it happen. The flutter spoons, Ben Parkinson spoons, uh, flutter jigs, Shimano, stuff like that. Even small soft plastic baits like the Savage Gear and stuff like that. But you just can't go wrong. The, the um, other ones that people are definitely banging them out on is the bone, like the Sarah Spooks from the uh, early 90s. That's been pretty much a success all through. Uh, that's pretty much it. So it's been definitely a, uh, a great season for stripers. Big fish are definitely moving in. And I uh, hope to see you guys on the water. We are gonna do a little surprise this week, hopefully for you guys. And uh, stay tuned and uh, catch them up, tight lines. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. And please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. If you would like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're once again looking for social media savvy anglers for hyper local reporting from around the NY metro and Long Island area, and especially from the beach. So you're, if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angle, contact the producer at tcslabayrat at gmail.com. Keep in mind you can send photos to my email at mbroderick at thefishing.com for a possible feature in these reports as well. Get out there this weekend and catch some fish.